will be our song of invitation. Please join me for this morning's scripture reading coming from Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 through 14. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifying to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from the dead, from dead works to serve the living God? Amen. Brother Mark. Good morning to everyone. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, beautiful Lord's Day. We need to understand something. We have a high priest, and that being Jesus Christ. We're going to study about that this morning. I had a friend of me one time that is Catholic, and he told me, well, you guys go straight, straight to God. And, of course, they went what they call through the priest. Well, we actually go through our high priest, Jesus Christ. We have prayed three times this morning already. The opening prayer and two prayers uh, when we served the Lord's Supper. And all three times we went through Jesus Christ, the high priest. Now, we don't go through some man-made priesthood. We don't have a priest that can offer uh, sacrifices and say that our sins are, are forgiven. Some man-made system something that resembles the Old Testament Levitical priesthood to some extent, and then some man-made doctrine. We go through our high priest, Jesus Christ, which is the one that made it possible for our sins to be forgiven, who makes it possible for us to go to God the Father, a passage that we want to make note of is Hebrews 4, verses 14 through 16. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest, it says we have, present tense, not will have or have had, but we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Well, who, who was that? Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Now, he was writing, the writer of Hebrews, to a great extent to keep those Christians that were in danger of going back under the old law of Moses. And so, yeah, so he says, hold fast your profession. Don't go back under the law of Moses. Stay under the law of Christ through Jesus Christ, the, our high priest. He says, hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Well, our high priest knows what it feels like to walk the face of this earth. We're studying about that on Wednesday nights in the book of Luke. We have started that. We are through a, a few chapters of that. But we see how people loved him at, at some extent. We saw how the Pharisees already, when we, no further than we have gone, how they wanted to trap him in something, and they were they were even upset when he performed miracles and helped people. When he did good, they still were upset. So Jesus has gone through all kinds of 
persecution. He went through beatings. He, he endured all these things. And he did that even having his back cut open with a whip and a crown of thorns put upon him and the mocking and the ridicule that he went through and being put on a cross and nailed to that cross and being put there until he died, he did that all so that we could have salvation. So he knows the feeling of our infirmities. He's gone through much more than we will ever go through, but was in all points tempted like as we are. Now, we are tempted. And now, unfortunately, sometimes we give in to the temptation. Now, it goes on to say here, yet without sin. Jesus didn't give in to the sin. Sometimes we do. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not striving to walk as a Christian, because sometimes we fall short. Jesus knows that. And we see in 1 John where if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. So we know that it is a continual process. First John written to Christians. And so we see that, yes, we do sin, but we have a way to be freed from those sins that we have, have committed. Jesus walked and he committed no sin. But now on the day of judgment, we will never be able to say to our Lord, well, you do not know what it's like to be persecuted as a Christian because he was persecuted like none other. You wouldn't, we will not be able to say on the day of judgment to our Lord Jesus, well, you do know what, don't know what it's like to be tempted like it is here on earth because he was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. He committed no sin even when he was tempted. He says, let us therefore, based upon, based upon these principles, these facts that he has just proven, based upon these things, let us therefore come boldly under, under the throne of grace. Let us come to the throne of grace. Now, he's talking about this high priest that we have. Here's the one that we come to the throne of grace through. Here, here's where we obtain grace. Now notice what he says next, that we may obtain mercy. We, we do that through our high priest, grace and mercy. Where does it come through? Jesus Christ, the high priest. He says, let us come to the throne of grace boldly. Now, that means we can understand and know for a fact that we can obtain mercy for our sins and we have grace of God. We, we have all the blessings that God has bestowed upon us in the spiritual sense because of Jesus Christ that we may obtain mercy and find grace, notice, to help in time of need. What, what a wonderful passage that we have and he says, come boldly before the throne of grace. You don't have to have doubts when you come before, uh, before God through Jesus Christ. If you are striving to live as God would have you to live according to his word. Now the world does not have that. And that, that is not a system built, a, built upon what man has said that we must go to some man for forgiveness and he will offer up our sins. It says, no, we go through Jesus Christ, the high priest that we have. We also notice something else about ourselves. And here's something that is very important that we know, but especially that we know living in a community that we live in that is dominated by the religion that it is. Notice what it says. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Now how do you do that? By Jesus Christ. 
You do that by Jesus Christ, not some man that you confess to. Man does not have the power to. But now he also says that we are a priesthood. He's talking to those that are Christians and says that we are priests. Now, that means all Christians are priests. Now, that's not in some kind of office that we're in. Well, we have somebody that's in the priesthood that offers sacrifices. No, that old, that old system is nailed to the cross and taken out of the way. But we are a priesthood, a royal priesthood according to the writer here. So we, as Christians, are a royal priesthood. We don't need to look to others for that. Notice next, in the book of, of uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and has made us, that's actually Revelation 1, verse 6. Notice, well, let's just look, look at Revelation 1, 6. He has made us kings and priests unto God, and, and his father. We, we are made priests. We, uh, as children of God, are priests under the order of Jesus Christ. Not under the order of Moses. Because in the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is something you can talk about, things that are better. It talks about the old system of Moses. But things that are better in Jesus Christ. That's where the things that are, are better are. And then, then we notice Hebrews 3 verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, notice, he, he addresses them in Hebrews as holy brethren. Now, that doesn't mean that we're sinful because we're not. Because we still need the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away our sins. But it is important to know how he addresses those that are children of God. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider the apostles and high priests of our profession, Christ Jesus. Now, holy brethren, let's think for a moment. We are priests. We are of the priesthood uh, as Christians. And he says, holy brethren, when we think of that, it will change our conduct. It will change the way that we live. It will change the way that we talk, the way that we speak, the places that we go, the, the places that we don't go. It will change our conduct in life if we consider that we are a priest after the order of Jesus Christ. And then next, Let's notice something about the theme of Hebrews. Actually, I've already mentioned something. It's, it's about things that are better. Things that are better in Jesus Christ. And let's notice, number one, Hebrews chapter 7, verses uh, 11 and 12. If therefore perfection were by the Levit Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should, arise, should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. See, the blood of bulls and goats that they offered under that old law could not forgive sins. It, it never did. Even under the law of Moses, when they offered them, it never did cleanse their sins. But we're under a better law now. We're, we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But now what about these people back here? What about these people that offered those sacrifices for, for, the, for sins? Well, what did it do when they offered those animal sacrifices? It made a remembrance of their sins. It kind of what we would say rolled them forward. And it rolled them forward all the way to the cross of Jesus Christ. And when he shed his blood, that blood went all the way backward and cleansed those people that walked according with God's will. But now we have something that is far greater. We don't want to be under that Levitical priesthood. 
We want to be under something that is better in Jesus Christ, and we have that. Notice next, in Hebrews 8, verses 6 and 7, but now, he, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator, notice, of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if the fir that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So we have the perfect law of Jesus Christ, what we call in James 1.25, the perfect law of liberty. And this law of Jesus Christ is what was proclaimed on the day of Pentecost and thereafter, and it made possible the way for men to be saved. But now, you have to also consider something else. Some of those people that had come and obeyed the gospel were in danger of going back under that old Levitical, Levitical law, which could not save them. So the book of Hebrews is written to address that. We have things, notice it said, that are better, a better covenant that we have. We have a better testament by a, certainly a better mediator, Jesus Christ versus Moses. And Hebrews chapter 5 verse 2 says, Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. He bore our infirmity on that cross. Je Jesus came for that purpose. He came and on the cross, what was one of the statements that he made? It is finished. And you even notice comments that he made while he was here on earth. I came to do the will of my Father in heaven which sent me. That was the reason that he came. That, that was the reason that he was here on earth to do the will of the Father, to make the way for you and for me that we could be saved. Next, we need to know he understands. See, we are under this better covenant. Jesus understands. Now, you see this picture, and this is a good picture right here. Because... All of us at some time feel like we're maybe lost, we're hurting, things in our life are going, going on. Now, this is not to say that we really know what Jesus looked like, but it, it does say that he does, he is there for us. He does understand. He, he, he can comprehend what we're going through. He went through the same thing in his life here upon this earth. So we have a high priest that was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Yes, he knows what we're going through. So we, we can go to God in prayer and we have somebody that pleads our case. And then we also see in John 11 verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible. You know what it is. Now, if you ever want to say that you can quote scripture, just re remember John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus, Jesus well. Now, that's, that's the shortest one. But why did he weep? Because he had compassion. Lazarus had died, and they were heartbroken over that. His sisters, his friends, so Jesus wept, seeing the pain that they were going through. Jesus sees when you and I suffer. Jesus sees that. So you, you are not alone. Sometimes we may feel alone, but we are never truly alone. In Hebrews, Hebrews 5 verse 5 it says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. He came to glorify the Father. He came to do the will that God sent him to do. And then Hebrews 7 verse 14, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. 
It wasn't of, of the old Levitical priesthood. Christ came out of, of the tribe of Judah. So it's, he, he, he came out of a different tribe. He, salvation is not going to be through the Levitical priesthood. That system can't save man. But then we know somebody by the name of Melchizedek. As he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever out of the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 5, verse 6. So we see that Jesus came from a different line, from a, a, a different uh, priesthood than did uh, the Mosaic system. Then we read Hebrews 6, verse 20, where, where the forerunner is, for us entered even Jesus, made an high priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek. Again, not the, not the priesthood of Levi, not of the uh, tribe of Aaron. Those people had to be of the people of Aaron. Jesus didn't come from that tribe. They made the sacrifices of the, uh, for the people, the blood of uh, the animal sacrifices. Once, uh, they did that in the holy place. And once a year, the high priest would go in the, in the most holy place and offer sacrifices. But here's something else the high priest did. He offered the sacrifices for the people, but he also had to offer sacrifices for himself. Jesus Christ didn't do that. He offered the sacrifices for the entire world, but he did not have to offer a sacrifice for himself because he did not commit sin. He was the perfect Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And then we also see in Hebrews chapter um, 15 and verse 17, we notice, as it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there rises another priest. It's over and over and over. Jesus comes from a different priesthood. And then in verse 17, for he testifies, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. You came from a different line. So he was telling them repeatedly, don't look back to that old law. And so we must look to Jesus Christ today as our high priest. And we as a holy priesthood must know that Jesus is the high priest we need to be able to know this, number one, for our own knowledge. But we also need to be able to know this so when we meet certain people and we're sitting down to have a discussion about the Bible with them, that we need to know this about Jesus Christ being our, our high priest. And we don't go directly to God, that we do go through the high priest Jesus Christ, but we don't go through some man because some man doesn't have the authority to offer sacrifices for our sins. Some man doesn't have the authority to say that your sins are forgiven. Only Jesus Christ could do that by the sacrifice that he made. It's like unto Melchizedek. And then we read also in the, in the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 3. Without father, without mother, that means there's... No record of it. Didn't mean that he didn't. Melchizedek didn't have one. Without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. And the first time that we read about the man Melchizedek, you remember where it is. You, if you go back into the study that you've already done recently, Genesis 14. You, you see where that Abraham had went and rescued Lot and, you know, saved them from what was taking place. And they, he met him on the way back and Melchizedek blessed Abraham. And Abraham paid homage, if you will, gave sacrifices, if you will, to Melchizedek. So the greater blesses the lesser. Melchizedek was greater than Abraham. Well, that's the order in which Jesus Christ, our high priest, comes from. He comes from a tribe that is greater 
than Abraham. Through Abraham came that Levitical system of Moses. So Jesus Christ came through a greater one than he did. So then we also notice next, Hebrews 7, verse 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests that offered those sacrifices to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once when he offered up himself. He doesn't need to do it again. Jesus Christ doesn't need to come to this world again and make any more sacrifices. It's already all been done. It's all been taken care of. Brethren, we have a reason to rejoice. I, I realize that 2020 was a pretty rough year. And we have some hope, even with the virus for 2021, that things are getting better. But something far more than that, we have a reason to rejoice because we have Jesus Christ as a high priest and he was offered once for our sins and we can be saved because of that. And so we have the great sacrifice that we have. In Hebrews 9, chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 6, it says, Now when these things were thus ordained, the priesthood went always into the first tabernacle of accomplish the service of God. And Hebrews 9, verse 7 says, But into the second went the high, went the high priest, alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself. And that's what he just mentioned once ago. The priest offered in the holy place sacrifices. But the high priest went once a year, and he offered with blood even for himself. He's offered. So he's not the perfect sacrifice. So if he has sins, he can't tell me that my sins are forgiven. He doesn't have the ability to do that. And then we notice next in Hebrews 9 verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place. Jesus just went into that place one time. And that's all that it took. And then in chapter 9, verse 26, it says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. He didn't have to do that. Then next, we notice that Hebrews 12, 10, verse 12, and then verse 14, But this man, after he, he had offered one sacrifices for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. See, he has that authority. There's the one that offered the perfect sacrifices. And once that he did that, he sat down on the right hand of God. Then notice next in verse 14. By one offering, he had perfected, notice, forever them that are sanctified, set apart. Oh, that's, that is you. That's me. That, that's what we, when we offer the invitation at, at every uh, sermon when we say if you haven't obeyed the gospel you need to believe repent and be baptized well, that's because because of this it's to those that are sanctified we want people to be sanctified set apart for the service of God so it, it, it makes a difference and that's by our high priest that's by the sacrifice only one sacrifice well how many sacrifices did they make under that old Levitical priesthood? There's no telling. You can't even number that. That, that would have been a tremendous number. But how many times did Jesus have to be offered? Just one time. Now notice Hebrews 9 verses 11 through 14. This is what was read for us. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of bulls and goats, but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of uh, bulls and goats and the ashes of an helper sprinkled the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more 
shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purged your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He purged our sins. It's through the high priest Jesus Christ. And then we notice Hebrews 9, verses 24 through 26. For Christ is not entered into the holy, holy places made with hands, which the, figure of the true, which the figure of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, not yet that he should offer himself Often as the high priest entered the holy, holy place every year with the blood of others, for then must he have offered, uh, have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once into the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin for the sacrifice of himself. It's done. It's finished. He's offered that perfect sacrifice on the cross. It never has to be offered again. Man couldn't do it. But now, where, where is our salvation? Where do we find it? Notice a passage in Hebrews 7, verse 25. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing, that, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. There's the one that we make intercession through. See, it's Jesus Christ. He makes intercession for us. He pleads our case for us. Now, here's what we, I want to point out. Something. That's what the Bible says. I, I realize some man may say something else. Yeah, yeah, but. No, he makes intercession for us. According to the writings of the Bible. Then we notice 1 Timothy 2 verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's the one, the only, that can save you. So we do have a high priest. He is there for us. He knows how we feel. He's been through the suffering. But now are we willing to serve under that high priest? If you're a Christian... You are a priest. And also a term that some people have misused is the word saint. As though you have to have some kind of miracle and other things that have happened. But if you are a Christian, you are a saint. Set aside to serve for God. This morning, a very serious question comes. Have you been baptized for the remission of your sins. Are you willing to do that today and confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and be baptized for the remission of sins? If you're a child of God and something's amiss, needs to be taken care of, are you willing to do that? Jesus is our high priest how should we treat the high priest? It's not just some man. It's our Lord. We should treat him with the utmost respect. If you need to respond, please do so as we stand, as we sing.